The current situation is very special in various aspects. Not only has the virus become a real threat to humanity right now, it also is responsible for the shutdown of almost every facility in almost every country on this beautiful planet. This condition is an economical disaster and we will have to struggle with its consequences for many years from now. The current situation is very bad, not only for businesses but for personal life as well. Most of us can't even go outside anymore or visit our friends or our family. This situation is just bad for everyone. How is your life going these days? Are you working from home? Can you still go outside? Please let us know in the comments. Now that everyone has to stay at home, there's much more free time available for everyone. This brings a huge opportunity, especially for developers. Now is the time to improve yourself as a developer and the person in general, and even profit from the current situation. In this video, we want to share with you some ideas on how you can use this newly gained time to your advantage. The first point that you have to understand is that you have to use your free time efficiently. I catch myself way too often just drifting away, scrolling through Instagram on my phone and not doing anything. But that's not good. You have to use your free time efficiently. There are two things you can do to use your free time efficiently. The first is to work on your own projects. This not only helps you sharpen your skills in the technologies you're using, for example a specific programming language like Python or web technologies like HTML and CSS, it also helps you to collect valuable experience for your life later on. Especially beginners tend to struggle when it comes to finding ideas for your projects. Later on in this video, we'll share some ideas with you on what kind of projects you could be doing in your free time. While working on your own projects is a very good use of your time, there's another thing you can do. You can try to learn something new in general. You can approach this in many different ways. Some may include reading a book or an ebook or watching videos online. Nowadays you can just go to YouTube and search for anything you want to learn and you will find plenty of great YouTube videos explaining the topic you're interested in. Another thing you could do is buy premium courses, for example on Ideonics.com. They can be a big step up to those free YouTube videos but are in no means necessary for your success as a developer. My favorite way to learn something new right now is by listening to podcasts. There are many great podcasts out there, so just go online and search for some you may be interested in. All the activities I described previously are not meant to be done once and then never again. This brings me to my next point. You have to establish good and lasting habits or mini habits right now at this time. Good habits are very important and they are crucial for your success. A small step every day brings you further than trying to climb a mountain in one day and failing. Or, what's even worse for a developer, losing interest in programming at all. In the following I want to give you some examples of good habits you can start implementing in your daily life right now. Write some code every day. It doesn't have to be much, but even 30 minutes a day, every day, can have a significant impact on your career as a developer. Trust me, this will pay off. Coding every day will let you learn so much and you'll get so much experience by doing it. Another neat side effect you will get by implementing this habit in your daily life is that you get to build your portfolio over time without having to invest too much time at once on getting those projects on your resume. Nowadays many people tend to struggle when it comes to reading books. Luckily I found something that works very well for me and could work for you as well. Reading 10 pages wouldn't even take you half an hour a day, but the effect it has is huge. If you think about it, reading 10 pages of a book a day would lead to about 300 pages a month, which is the length of an average book. This would mean that in one year you will be able to read 12 books. Think about it, 12 books in one year. Isn't that amazing? What are you waiting for? Try it out yourself. When being trapped inside your house for weeks, it is very important to build a solid foundation for your day. One way to achieve this is by establishing a morning or evening routine. For example, you could try reading those 10 pages I talked about before every morning even before checking your phone. This is awesome, because you will have achieved something even before getting out of bed in the morning. Isn't that a great feeling? I really like writing a to-do list every evening before going to sleep. This helps me to structure the next day and also shows exactly what I have to do, so I don't have to even think about doing something else like wasting my time scrolling through endless posts on Instagram or just doing nothing at all. The last idea of a habit worth implementing in your daily life is sports or fitness in general. It's important to stay healthy at any point in your life, so it may be a good idea to think about how you can implement sports or fitness in your daily life. 
As you can see, those habits, or also called mini habits, are very important and can be very effective as they are the key to success. It's crucial to develop good habits as everybody without exception has many bad habits. If your good habits outweigh your bad habits, you'll eventually be more successful in every single aspect of your life. The best thing about developing those habits right now is that you can use them even after the lockdown ends. So please do me a favor and comment down below right now what habits are you trying to employ in your daily life right now and are you planning to keep them even after the quarantine ends. I would be really interested in hearing that from you. So far we have learned that habits play a huge role when it comes to developing new skills or just becoming a little bit more successful in your life in general. Now we're at the part of the video where we want to give you some actual project ideas and stuff you can do as part of your daily habits or just in your free time. This could be especially useful for beginners as I know from experience it sometimes can be really difficult to come up with ideas for your own projects when you're new to the industry. The first idea we want to showcase now is building your portfolio. It's crucial to have a good portfolio showcasing your best projects and some snippets of your work. It's extremely important for freelancers but it's also very useful for developers in general. When building your portfolio you have to include some projects. If you're a web designer, a web developer or a front-end developer in general or something like that, you could try to build some cool websites, maybe even for free if you're a real beginner, for some local firms or restaurants or just small companies in your town. If you don't have anyone you can build a website for, it's a good idea to just come up with a random company name and build a sample website for an imaginary business. You also have to build your actual portfolio website. There are many aspects to it. The first being that you have to design your site. Nowadays many people have a portfolio website and it's important for you that your site sticks out a little bit. You can achieve this by using your own ideas and creating your own custom design. Many people are just using some boring WordPress templates or something like that. So if you're proficient in using HTML and CSS for example, you can really stick out by creating an impressive design on your own for your portfolio website. Now you have a cool and outstanding design for your website. The next thing you have to do is populating it with information about you and showcasing your actual projects. Now the only things left to do is getting a domain name and hosting your site. There are many things you could do. For example, you can buy a domain name and host it on your own. Or you can go to like GitHub pages for example, where they provide a domain name for you. Usually it's I think github username.github.io or something like that. And uh, on there you can host your site for free. Or, like I said before, you can buy a cool domain name and buy a hosting service or if you're really fancy, just set up a server on your own and host it on your own PC. The next idea is to start developing a personal brand. Again, this is extremely useful for freelancers but it's also nice for all kinds of developers as it just helps you to stick out a little bit more in this highly competitive industry. The first thing to do when starting your personal brand is polish your social media channels. Many people tend to have a lot of old and really bad photos on their Instagram or Facebook page. Delete them and replace them with some newer ones. You can also professionally set up your Xing and LinkedIn profiles. Update your resume on there and add the technologies you are used to and the languages you speak for example. This will help recruiters to find you more easily. Besides social media it's very useful to share your knowledge with others. You could write some articles, for example for your own blog. If you don't have one, it may be a good idea to start your own. Or you can write for other blogs or platforms like dev.to or medium.com. It's also a good idea to share your thoughts and general learnings on social media. For example, you can use Twitter or Instagram for this, especially the Instagram story feature. This brings me to my last point, which is participating in challenges. As you will see, those challenges are extremely useful when establishing a habit, especially when you want to establish the habit of coding every day. The best challenge I can highly recommend for everyone is the 100 days of code challenge. The rules are very simple. There are only two of them. The first one is code every day for the next 100 days for at least one hour. The second rule is that you have to share what you did and what you learned every day on social media. Most people use Twitter for this with the hashtag 100 days of code. As you can see, this challenge can really help you establishing your own habits. At the end, you'll have plenty of new knowledge, experience and even some projects to put on your portfolio or resume. Other examples of good challenges may include the JavaScript 30 challenge by Wes Boss. 
In the JavaScript 30 challenge, you build a project a day for 30 days in a row with just using vanilla plain JavaScript. It's a free challenge and Westboss provides tutorials and solutions for each day and each project for you. So it may be worth to check it out. Another cool challenge is the 301 days of code challenge. It's very similar to the 100 days of code challenge, but it's just longer and requires more will to get through. I provided the links to the official websites of all of those challenges in the description so you don't have to search them on your own. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From now on, we are posting a new video every week on Monday, so stay tuned for more videos. Did you learn something new during this video and are you planning to implement any of the things we discussed in your daily life? Please let us know in the comments so we can elaborate on this topic furthermore. For most topics in this video, we only scratch the surface. So if you're interested in seeing more on a specific topic, please let us know in the comments. This would be a great help for us. But with all of that being said, have a nice day and stay healthy. See you next week.